Hi guys welcome to my channel before starting subscribe and like the videos it really helps the content from this video are taken from the web novel and manga series of Mushoku Tensai Jobless Reincarnation now please enjoy the video. Part 2 and so ends the documentary like introduction of the house to Sylphie. She's sitting on the bed, and nestled against me. She was grinning and in a good mood. I'm glad above anything that she likes it. I want to push her down, and continue doing what husbands and wives do. However, before that, there's a little something I need to discuss with her. Sylphie, it's been about three weeks since we decided we'd get married. Though it was short, some time has already passed. Ye, yes. Using Kago basically meant that it was an important discussion. Noticing this, Sylphie fixed her posture. Though we're getting married, honestly speaking, I have no idea what to do. Frankly speaking, though I bought a house, I can't help but feel that doing so was too forward. I, I don't think so. I'm really happy after all. This is such a wonderful place that on the contrary, I'm wondering if someone like me is fine, is that so? It's alright as long as there are no problems then, but what I wanted to talk about was basically what we'd be doing after this. What we'd be doing after this. When I said that, Sylphie's face turned red and for some reason started to fidget. Um, how many do you want, Rudy? But my elf blood runs strong, so it might be difficult to conceive but. Why, yeah. Those were some really arousing words. Since this isn't modern Japan, there's no aversion to having children due to economic reasons. MMN. I'm someone who follows his instincts. The instinct of living beings is, in other words, to reproduce. Reproducing is, in other words, making babies. But what are you going to do about your job as Ariel Sama's guard? However, the issue of Sylphie's job should have been easy to understand. Though I don't know what Ariel Sama is thinking, if Sylphie becomes pregnant she won't be able to continue as a guard. Well, if it was just that, me or someone else could replace her. My battle ability is pretty high after all. However, being a guard isn't just about battles. What do you mean by, what wouldn't it be difficult to do both? Regarding that, I've discussed it with Ariel Sama, it seems they've discussed it. I guess it's natural, we'll be in this country for another two years, and it's not like she'll be returning to the kingdom of Asura the moment she graduated. She'll probably be here for another five years. That's why, um, Sylphie doesn't seem to be planning on quitting her job as a guard. From the fact that she won't simply quit, you can feel the strength of her bonds with Ariel Sama and Luke. If it were the old Sylphie who just depended on me, what would she have said? Would she have thrown everything else away and remained with me for the rest of her life? That would be nice in its own way, but, sorry, thinking about it, I'm being rude to you, aren't I? Even though you've bought us such a wonderful house, I won't really settle down because I'll be serving as Ariel Sama's guard, I'm not really qualified to be a bride like this, am I? With a melancholy expression, Sylphie lowered her gaze. The man goes to work, and the woman looks after the home. That kind of idea isn't really strong here. It might be because the men and women in this world don't have a large difference in strength. Even saying that, you could say that it's still an ideal here that the men work and the women stay at home. I might, really be no good, huh? Said Sylphie, with tears in her eyes. She seemed apologetic for some reason. Two years of abstinence. Having regained my sexual desires, two, no, three years worth of white stuff erupted from me. It's been inputted into my mind that Sylphie equals person that allowed me to do erotic stuff. You could say that most of my goodwill towards Sylphie is sexual. This is already basically carved into me. However, I don't think that this is bad in itself. To me, sexual desire is something important. Sylphie was the one who brought this important thing back to me, using her own body. I'm such a massive sex beast that the beast race will draw away from me. If you feed someone like me an aphrodisiac, you'll be attacked. It was Sylphie's first time. Because I was so rough, I'm sure that she was scared. Even though that was the case, she completely hid it. When I woke up in the morning, she even looked at me with a smile. Because of that, I was able to regain my confidence. If Sylphie is no good, then who on earth would be? If right now for some reason I didn't marry Sylphie, and then Sylphie was taken by some other guy, I'd probably regret it for the rest of my life. If she were taken from me, right, Sylphie is already my belonging. You're mine, Sylphie. Phew. Ah, yes. I'm yours, Rudy. So please marry me. Thinking about it, this is the first time I've said it directly to Sylphie. Yes. While her cheeks turned red, Sylphie nodded. I let out a sigh of relief. I'll try my best with the house, so please don't worry about your job as a guard. It's fine just to do as you like, Sylphie. Well, if possible, 
I'd like to sleep with you once every few days though, that's about all I want. My desires leaked out. By sleeping, you mean, that kind of sleeping, right? No, no, of course I won't force you. When you don't want to, I'll be happy just being allowed to rub your tiny chest. Um, I'll try my best. I don't plan on making you endure, you know? It's not good to force yourself. You have to properly rest up after a tired day at work. I'll take care of things myself as long as you let me touch you a little before bed for example, or in the morning. My desires are completely overflowing. No, even if I try and put on an act, it's meaningless in front of Silphy. I was this sort of person from the beginning. Do you really like my boobs that much? I love them. But Luke said that my chest has no charm at all, the words of a whippersnapper like him have zero credibility. The younger you are, the more you fuss over whether they're large or small. However, what's truly important isn't that. It's heart. Right, Opai Senin. But you know, it's not really that different to yours, Rudy. No, these huge, iron-forged pecs of mine are different from that beautiful flatchest of yours. If you want, how about having a touch? Saying that, I push my chest forward and Silphy softly touches me. It really is completely different, huh, it's hard. Wah. When I got carried away and flexed, Silphy moved her hand away in a panic. Since these pecs belong to you, feel free to touch them whenever you want, okay? A, although I'm yours, Rudy, keep in mind the time and location, okay. How about now? R, right now is, um, we're in the middle of an important discussion aren't we? Oop, that's right. We got off topic. In other words I should get to the point, huh? So that our married life goes smoothly from now on, we should properly discuss what expectations we have of each other, what we're dissatisfied about, and things like that. That's basically what I want to say. After I tried my best to summarize what I wanted to say, Silphy nodded. MN, that's right. For now, is there anything that you think you should say to me? After thinking for a while, Silphy looks downwards. Then in a melancholy smile, she spoke. Don't suddenly disappear, okay. Yeah. That's right, huh. It'd be rough if I suddenly went away somewhere. I've got it. I won't suddenly disappear. We made a promise. I think I understand the pain of having someone you love disappear on you. It seems that the important stuff is over with. There are a number of other things that we have to discuss but, we'll get through those one by one. So then, can I? Gee, go ahead. With a nervous expression, Silphy pushed out her thin chest. I immediately made to rub them but, I endured it. The same as last time, I was about to turn into a beast. This time let's prioritize treating her gently over lust. I gently embraced Silphy. Like that, I slowly pushed her down onto the bed. A, aren't you going to rub them? That's for morning and night. M, M, N. We look at each other up close. My face is reflected in Silphy's moist eyes. She gently closed them. While caressing her head, we clumsily kissed. Part 3 that night. I raised my sluggish body and descended to the basement. Since I had just moved in, right now there was nothing in the underground cellar. There were just a small number of shelves left around, and it was a pretty sorry state. I walked towards the back of the room, and reached out my hand towards the concealed door that the craftsman had fixed. Before, a door that would creak, key key, when opened. Though it was meant to be a concealed door, there were stains around it, and its existence became obvious once there was some light. After, the metal parts responsible for opening and closing were new and properly oiled, so the door opened without a single sound. The cellar walls were also of new material, and no one would be able to tell that there was a door there. The door quietly opened to reveal a space. Quietly sitting inside was a household shrine. It was a small shrine made of unpainted wood. The altar was made of lustrous, black stone, and a holy relic was enshrined there. That filthy workshop had been cleaned up, and transformed into a sublime, and divine space. In the night when everything else had fallen asleep, in this newly consecrated holy ground, I offered my prayers to God. That's it guys thank you for watching subscribe if you want more and don't forget to like the videos.